looking at that video, there's a couple things that stuck out to me. First of all, when people have passed out or been injured on the field before, even people who've been knocked out, there's a difference in how their body reacts even as they are losing consciousness. For example, if you faint, you typically crumble. And until you actually hit the ground, your body attempts to protect itself from that fall. That wasn't the case with this. There was, there was no attempt at um, unconscious protection. His body was completely, completely out of it, for lack of a better term. That is very, very unusual. That shows that it's something incredibly serious, which we now know that it is. So that's the first thing that I noticed. The second thing that I noticed is um, this, this photograph of his teammates surrounding him in prayer, right? And I this struck me at the time because everything has gotten so political in the NFL. You can't escape the politics, it seems. It's gotten a little bit less than it was when they were showing all the athletes kneeling for the flag. But this actually shows the heart of our country more than the Colin Kaepernick garbage did. This shows that the American people, even, even these football players might be majority leftists. That's very possible. They might be, they might be liberal. They might, they, they might, as Colin Kaepernick claimed, most of them might believe the Black Lives Matter narrative. I don't know. But this shows that at our core, we are still a believing nation. We are a nation that believes in God and believes in the power of prayer and believes in using that prayer to intercede for each other. And that's a moment that regardless of everything else we're going to talk about or what, how this might unfold, that we should not forget. In fact, this is something that I never thought I never thought I would see from ESPN. On air, an ESPN host said a beautiful prayer for Damar Hamlin. Take a look at this. You know, like, this is a little bit different. I heard, I've heard it all day, like, thoughts and prayers. And you just heard Scherf and Jonathan Allen say, like, all we can do is pray for him and I've heard the Buffalo Bills organization say that we believe in prayer. And maybe this is not the right thing to do, but I want to, it's just on my heart that I want to pray for it is. DeMar Hamlin right, right, right now. Um, I'm going to do it out loud. I'm going to close my eyes. I'm going to bow my head, and I'm just going to pray for him. Um, God, we come to you in these moments that we don't understand, that are hard, uh, because we believe that you're God, and coming to you and praying to you um, has impact. We're... we're sad, we're angry, um, and we want answers, but some things are unanswerable. We just want to pray, truly come to you and pray for strength for Damar, for healing for Damar, for comfort for Damar, to be with his family, to give them peace. If we didn't believe that prayer didn't work, we wouldn't ask this of you, God. Um, I believe in prayer. We believe in prayer. We lift up DeMar Hamlin's name in your name. Amen. 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 It's beautiful. Respectfully. Amen. Think about the audience, the huge audience that saw that prayer, that took part in that prayer. This is the heart of our country. And again, I know, I know right now, as we as we sit here talking, as I film this show, there are a lot of blue check marks on Twitter who are virulently criticizing me for talking about the correlation between the you know what and Damar Hamlin, questioning whether there is a correlation. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that in just a second. But putting that aside, this is something that we should all focus on. This this heart of our country, this heart of our country, being a people of faith who believe in God who believe in the power of prayer. That is something that, honestly, I never thought I'd see in NFL football again.